if there's no older idea dust drinker. Does that bounce uh, damage thing, right? If you have more, yeah. Intensify is one of many horrible designs in uh, late stage duelist. It's literally get lucky, the mechanic. It's horrible if you draw only one. It's okay if you draw two. It's broken if you draw three. It's just high roll keyword. So we could also just um, switch to complaining about dating. Um, no, we, we can like do make the stream into complaining about dating and complaining about one draw to list and not actually do anything productive or fun. Um, would you guys like that? Like I could tell you how much I hate this card because. Um, when we switched from 2 draw to 1 draw, Vitruvian was one of the few factions that didn't feel horrible to play. Because uh, there were not many draw cards, especially not uh, viable ones. Even though you really need a draw in 1 draw, obviously. Uh, Vitruvian was one of the few factions that didn't feel horrible to play because they had second wish to draw 2 cards for 2 mana. Pot of Greed uh, meme. Um, so you didn't have to go into top deck mode on turn 3 and you could actually play the game a bit longer than uh, other factions. Uh, there were some other draw cards like Right of the Undervolt, but yeah, Vitruvian was playable on like Venor or something, or Lionar, uh, which didn't have uh, Trinity Oaths. Uh, and then they nerfed it. Instead of giving the other factions other good draw, they were like, no, nobody should um, play the game in one draw. Everybody has to go in top deck mode on turn three. Because top deck mode is fun. Um, and frustrating, uh, said Joseki. And then not, not much later in Shimzar they released this. You draw three instead of two for three mana. So almost we were almost happy, we could almost play the game again with Vitruvian. But then it turned out you played three battle pads. So it would take three turns of replacing to actually draw two three cards, and you would always get the battle pad you replaced back into your hands because fate was right about the replace bug. So you would actually never draw cards from your deck and just get shitty shit in your hand. And this card just summarizes the one draw new card, draw cards, philosophy uh, for the first few expansions. Like it got better over time, of course. In the end, uh, everything but Venor, I think. Yeah, everything but Venor got good infection draw that actually drew from your own deck. Because CPG loved to make you draw from either a deck that didn't exist, create cards into your deck that you don't play, like this, or draw from the opponent's deck. Um, but they didn't really like you to build a deck in a smart way and then have you draw from your own strategy, from your own game plan. You had to draw uh, things that had nothing to do with it, so that things stayed nice and random and unskilled. Um, and full top deck mode all the time uh, if you didn't play these kind of draw cards. So yeah, do you guys like this kind of content where we do nothing productive, nothing fun, just complain? Mm. Well, Pogorol, Pogors. I love it when people heal for 10 billion for 2 mana with Invigorate, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah, Intensify is fun, right? Dust Drinker plus Synaptic Arbitrage plus Superior Mirage. I don't know what Synaptic does. I remember the other cards. If your opponent means to take control of nearby enemy means with less attack. Opponent mean to take control. Hmm? Give your opponent mean to take control of nearby enemy. I'm so confused. Give your opponent a minion, okay? 
to take control of nearby enemy minions with less attack. Okay, so you summon like the 10 tree golem for 4 mana, and then steal everything around it. Probably don't need to use such a high attack minion. So, in one draw, Vitruvian had a very weird sabotage card. I didn't even remember this card. Maybe I, I already quit. I do remember Vitruvian always got really weird garbage cards. This rework in a new duel list is really good. Like, it's much more interesting and playable than this. Just a bunch of fans. So much better than the professionals. They should be uh, embarrassed. Oh yeah, and then they also later um, re-released Second Wish in a nerfed version. Like, why didn't they nerf it to this immediately? Instead of getting rid of Draw with Vitruvian for uh, quite a few patches. Also, why why do you release it in this nerfed version if you also have Trinity Oath? Which draws three cards and heals for three, for one mana more only. In a better faction. Well, maybe Dino is not necessarily better. It depends on which patch, right? Because Sensual Reader and Blood of Air it really help and fold. Um, Battle pets are so bad, yeah. Fortunately, they're not coming back to to roll duelist because they're not only bad but also stupid. We can do that. Love the tutor. What's that French word? I don't know that word. I'm not a native speaker of English or French. Play a headhunter deck. Why not? I don't drop Mitron. Oh, basically at the end. It is a good history lesson. Yeah, probably um, one draw duelist was probably at its best, like just before Mitron. Uh, the majority of people uh, hated Mitron. Nose was the nickname of this thing. Oh, this is a lot of card text for Duelist. It doesn't really fit. I thought this card was pretty cool. Like, it's pretty interesting for a Rush minion. High roll. High roll card with high roll archetype. With the all the shit, what's the name? Lurking fear. We, we, I could just point at all the high roll cards. Like even something like Malicious Wisp is kind of a high roll card because it's so broken on turn two, and in the late game it's garbage. <laughs> oh yeah, here somebody told. Talked about this before, the Fenrir with two Fenrirs inside. Ogan Memeton. I never really understood the meaning of this name. Like there's a tree inside a thing. It doesn't really look like it if you look at the art. It doesn't look like an oak, right? Venar Slasher. Um, monolithic vision was peak to Zeki design. Let's look at it so that we can rent more. Just for me, extra point to six, random for trivial scars, that costs four less. Yep, that's very typical uh, Joseki. Just if you put in the word random, you can find all Joseki cards. It's a lot, right? Whoa, Magmar not random? I remember that, you know, we had. He had an archetype invented by Grinch, the um, eSports Magmar. 
doesn't make sense. There's only one page. <laughs> Those of random neutrals. Seriously? Linar is no RNG faction? Just this toxic card? Swan Eye 2. <laughs> Actual Joseki card. It's funny that the real Joseki card is indeed really a Joseki card. Like it's and garbage and RNG and bad design. Yeah, it's it, it it's actually really funny how how Joseki the the Joseki card is. It's Joseki exception. I believe the only the Mitron Wonder was good from the Mitron cards. It can be made of wood. Then Joseki used to cost zero mana? I don't know. It doesn't seem like a card that needs nerfing, so I don't think so. Uh, no, there were, there were more trial cards that were goofed, right? Not just Wanderer. Besides, everyone said, oh, Wanderer is so bad. Um, and then, for some reason, me. Tepid Kong slash Hacker um, and Good Guy Hopper all brought only Wanderer and we all made it to the semis and Hacker and me uh, played the finals. <coughs> and then suddenly it was OP. I don't even know why I played only Wanderer. I was just told to do that by Mazer and Jay. I was like, okay. Thanks for the $1,000, I guess. I'm not that much of a dick, by the way. I actually gave them some of the money. Same for uh, the World Championship. Um, okay, uh, Mitron. Can you select a rarity or something? You could do that, right? In the past. Okay, let's look at uh, Prince Satijos. This thing was very good before the nerf. It was like one of the least liner things liner has ever had because it was, uh, you know, pure cheese and uninteractive. They had a bad one, right? Yeah, this thing. This thing wasn't good, but. Lino one was good before the nerf. Nose was never good. I'm pretty sure Xorg Soul was good, right? I think it was also nerfed or something. Oh yeah, the Joseki Rider of the Undervolt. And Hate Furnace, I think, was also nerfed to require more minions. Like more spells cast to get plus attack. Because obviously Turning everything into a Macanter is uh, very good. Um, stupid design, oh, again. Oak was bad. Yeah, so like about half were good, I guess. Mm. I mean, I don't see anyone complaining about uh, complaining content. So. Is that what we're gonna do? Just complain? I don't hate every design in um, the one draw cards, so maybe this uh, complaining thing can be mildly more interesting by going up and down like an emotional roller coaster. No, let's just go for the stupid cards. Uh, I think I will skip the cards that are very bad, therefore were useless to make, but they didn't really harm the game. <laughs> Actually weird that this card was not played in one draw ever, uh, almost never. Seems more than decent, right? In one draw.
Yeah, this thing was a bit uh, a bit silly that a one drop can give you so much value. Like easily heal for nine over the course of a game or something. And that it also allows you all the heal synergies in your deck. Just camp the tile with Vitriol, which is uh, one of the more toxic cards uh, Lionar has had. You know, pure RNG. And there are many things, you know, some people said that, especially towards the end of one draw, people didn't draw that many answers anymore. Like, I, I know that someone of Mkuta talked a bit about that on YouTube, and because he, I think he felt like uh, the removal in two draw is too good. While in one draw, people didn't play removal. It's definitely not totally wrong, but I think one of the reasons why people stop playing removal is because how can you deal with all the random shit in this version of the game? And even if you can deal with it, there are many ways where you can deal with something and you lose anyway. Because the answer you can run for it is not good. Uh, the best example of that are the Rag BBS and Riva BBS. Because, yes, you can block there. It's pretty efficient as an answer. But you spend a card. And they didn't. So you dealt with it. But you're still losing. Because that blood tier on the board is not going to win you the game, is it? Um, and that's especially for something like Venar, which just has no real draw. Entering like that doesn't really do anything. Like, it's a losing play to answer the opposing threat. That's silly. In general, the BBSs are uh, not well balanced, never were, especially at the start. And then you think you would, they would learn about it, but then they released Ragnora later anyway. That was so mind-boggling to me that they released this thing after going through the first phase of um, nerf cycles of BBSs, that they dare to give like a kind of heart seeker that has rebirth and celerity and they can give it rush with Eggmorph because the yeah the, the rebirth buff in one draw was also very stupid give all eggs rush uh, oh yeah because rebirth is so broken in one draw not only does rebirth like in two draw uh, make you play into McCanter because you have to clog up around the egg minion uh, at least with two things one to kill it, one to kill the egg again, answering the egg is something you have to do but it's a losing play because you spend a card on, on a nonsense thing a zero one um, but if you don't then the minion is just healed back to full with rush. It's uh, more than silly. So it's so easy in one draw for Magmar to stick Young Silitar on the board. Uh, and you of course have range binder, which is also <laughs> such a stupid card. Like you had the veteran Silator nerf. <coughs> Where is it? Okay, they rebuffed it again later, I see. Because it used to be a 4 3 a Windblade add up with Rebirth for 4. Um, which was an understandable nerf at the time because they made Rebirth broken. That's when they nerfed this to 4 3. Apparently, they later rebuffed it to 4 4. But look. Why why did they nerf this? Like why how did they realize that with the new rebirth old Silator will be broken and then they're like mmm but uh, this thing is totally fine 
it has um, just as many total stats as the 4-drop, but it has a better distribution. It can heal your general for 3 and it's 1 mana less. And it gets discounted by Metallurgist and activates other Golem bonds. Hmm. It's fun to take the trip down memory lane. Okay, that's good. Then I'll just keep ranting, I guess. I feel like you would need it like 9 amp in one draw. A rage pointer and life slash. Oh, a lot of slashers, so. Uh, I'm happy we have other devs now that actually play the game, and quite a few of them are actually good at the game as well, like Cybin and Bladen. Uh, I mean, Mazer is not that active as a dev, I don't think, but anyway, also a, a dev that's very good at the game. And yeah, since today he plays again, I guess. Did it in, in advance to the nerf to Silator? Oh, they first made it a 4 3 and then buffed the uh, rebirth. It going to 4 3 wasn't actually the funny part, it was Rage Binder coming out after that. Yeah, that was the really funny part. Um, you know, I'm obviously a Magmar hater, and but um, one draw Magmar uh, did definitely really help to that because you, for example, also had very big brain decks uh, like Entropic Gaze. It did four damage and drew you a card. Like, w w what the fuck is wrong with you? It's n it wasn't even blockable in any way except uh, Prophet of the White Palm or the Shroud thing in Venar the Spell. This used to do 4 damage and 6 with... Uh, what's his name? Decimus. And there's absolutely nothing, nothing skillful about this card. It's really just a two mana cantrip for four or six damage. I, I, like what else can I say about that card before it got nerfed? And even in its nerf state, it's still, you know, it's not broken anymore, of course, but I mean, it's still stupid design. You don't even, because the thing is, you don't even have a choice with this card. You can only go face like Phoenix Fire. You at least it's at least more skillful because and you have to choose between face and board, and you can even put it on your own board or own face. More more choices, you know, and that's something that they did a lot in the one draw changes that they took away choices. Like uh, look at Blood here. I mean, I understand why they did it because they buffed Blood here to a one drop, so uh, that's kind of broken. But it was a less skillful card, because look, do one damage to an enemy. You cannot hit your own minions anymore. Less decision making, less weird synergies. Um, I also always think Primus Fist is a great example of why two draw is more skillful than one draw. Because this change to Primus Fist um, was a correct change going from two draw to one draw. I don't think that was nonsensical from CPG because you play only one card per turn usually giving one minion plus two attack instead of multiple plus one makes sense for the new way the, the game is played so Primus is got changed not not really nerfed because even though the plus two attack is only temporary and only one minion um, it's very nice for up trading um, but yes, why is this so much less skillful? Why does this show why one draw is so much less skillful than two draw? Because you play two cards per turn in two draw, board states are more complex. Um, you have more minions on the board. Therefore, you can also play the Primus Fist that buffs everything around it. Um, if you don't know what I mean, then please, uh, like for new players, <coughs> uh, 
please play a deck with uh, a lot of low drops and three primus and maybe play some rush in it like russia's curse or tiger and you will see that when there is a complex board state you have like three minions on the board and an opponent too and you're like in the corner of the battlefield it can be very hard to put to figure out where you have to put primus fist to buff all your minions and still um after that move your minions in the right position positions to clear board and go face correctly you re you really have to plan out your turn like um for example move with a minion first not move with the other ones yet then primus and then move with the other minions or um maybe you have to make a jux play for the perfect primus fist positioning you know well in one draw there is no decision making there is no positioning you just there's just one minion you want to uptrade with you put it next to it you uptrade the end this is not that positional compared to two draw primus fist so even though this change makes sense um i think this is not a bad redesign for the new game it shows you why the new game is less skillful and less positional and playing less cards per turn is also less decision making by itself right if you can play only one card per turn then what decision do you have to make am i going to play the altus or am i going to play uh what's another four drop primus shield master that's your decision in one draw well in two draw you have the decision between mystic and primus or the altus or um fenrir plus snow chaser you know <clears throat> I hope it makes sense what I'm saying. I do look forward to seeing how 2 draw develops. It always remember what I was told by CPG when we were test go we were testing going to one draw for the first time. I remember that too because I was still um, somewhat in a honeymoon phase with this game, not totally, because I did really hate Jaxi and Keeper. Um, but I. I still um, had some trust uh, in the game and the direction and so on, and I liked it. Um, and then, what was I going to say? And then they announced the rule change and they, in the news post they said something like, oh, just this one subtle rule change, they, they presented it as a like a subtle, nice new little change, just a notch in a different direction. And I totally bought it. I was like, oh, okay, I'm excited to try this uh, new rule out, new game rule. Like I, I didn't have any cynical attitude at all. And then I played my first game and I was like, nothing is happening. And I can't play anything anymore on turn three. And that had partially to do with not knowing how to play one draw, of course. We hadn't adapted yet because we weren't used to it. But there also was not much room for adaptation. Because there weren't that many draw cards. It was not... Um, they did change a lot of cards, go from 2 to 1. But it was not enough um, card reworks for that rule change because it was not a subtle small rule change they presented it as that they copy wrote it like that but yeah it was really just some kind of marketing and marketing is lying right uh they left they felt that design space in two role would forever remain limited to only the fastest cards no matter what they came up with and released this two role is kind of that way now opening gamut for example will always make cards that have Thinking over anything that needs to wait to do something. Yeah. There is some truth in it for sure, but I think then it makes more sense to rework the removal cards than to go to one draw.
and I personally do actually like the more tactics based um, combat, you call it, I guess, where unlike in one draw, people can come back, every turn can swing around. The winner, uh, the person that looks like is winning, can change every turn. Um, because the thing is, if you if you can, uh, because everyone is playing these things that have immediate effects, because everyone is doing that, um, their immediate effects are kind of kind of the other immediate effects, and then you get these stringy more interesting games in my opinion but yeah it is true that a lot of cards are unplayable and a famous design space but again i really think it has to do with the removal cards not with two draw i don't see how two draw um, contributes to that i feel like Dula has always had insane strong removal yeah except vitruvian <coughs> But yeah, I, I do indeed think that the removal is the bigger reason for uh, that whole design space limitation story. In any case, uh, obviously I don't think Wonder was the solution. But please keep in mind I am very biased. Because it's also personal taste, right? Uh, I've noticed a lot of people are coming back for one draw, not two draw, which makes me a bit worried because I don't want one draw to be the main game because I don't like to play it. But you know, there are so many people saying, where are BBS, where are BBS, where are BBS, which is also something I don't want to return. Uh, maybe that's something we should talk about. I mean, I already talked about how Riva and Ragnora had BBSs that were so good that even answering them makes you lose the game because they get card advantage if you answer it. I think it's just this um, Kutatsu that actually trades with it and the Abyssian Creep thing. I'm pretty sure those are the only two cards that are also one, one mana, just like Heartseeker and Egg. And that also don't cost a card. So there are only two cards in the game that trade fairly with these BBSs. That don't give them card advantage or a threat that can win the game. And you can only run three of those in Songhai and Abyss. While I have um, infinite ones. I uh, suddenly switched to some different accent accidentally. Yeah. So... I think this BBS is fucking stupid. I think this BBS is fucking stupid. And this BBS is a win con by itself as well, and you actually really can't answer it. Unlike uh, Art Seeker and this, you can't really ever answer this BBS. But at least it's crappy in the early game and mid game. At least it's only good uh, in the late game. But it is pretty stupid that you don't have to put any card in your deck to have a to have a win con. Which is with many BBSs, I guess, like like Vav. Vav, uh, Vav BBS is also a win con in itself. And unlike Warbird, it's insanely good in the early game. Like if they open crypto with Vav, then almost all your two drops in your deck have half their value. Or even less. Oh, I hear a Reaper raid. Reaper of the Nine Moons. Thank you, Weggy, for your raid. Vav and Xerix have balanced BBS. Oh yeah, Xerix also used to have a balanced BBS before the nerf. Face Monkey. I'm pretty sure the people who want BBS back come from all the CCGs because for some reason they always. Yeah, that's true, they all say hero power. Col Colos also always called it hero power. 
Which would be Bloodborne spell is not really a marketable word, right? So the opinion should be disregarded. I mean, I, I already have the toxic trait to disregard one draw positive opinions. Um, I do think I'm a bit too aggressive on it. But it's just my Joseki Vietnam flashbacks, man. Um, one draw letter is dead, by the way. Really? They all come to realize the two draws better. I'm happy to hear that. Maybe that's why we saw drag all today on the ladder. Because um, I did know from Mazer that Dragol was playing Duelist GG for a while already. But I would rather have him in 2 draw. It would be good for the competitive scene. Even though his Magmar will make me salty. You know, he's allowed to make me salty after what I did to him. With the Max. Changing how removal is portrayed overall is definitely a di direction to approach, yeah. Though I'm surprised that I don't miss BBS as much as I thought. Yeah, that's because now you can build your deck around older synergies instead of the forced synergy. Uh, that's, I guess we go to the next rant about um, Joseki Design Era. Like the forced synergies with the BBS. Like, so you have all the broken BBSs, right? And then you have the really bad ones, like Starhorn. Because you give your opponents cards. Um, so this is a horrible BBS. And then CPG is like, uh, we don't want to put um, creativity and effort into reworking it into something good. And balanced at the same time. So instead, um, BBS does A. This card gets bigger if A. There are so many cards like that. Bad BBS does A. This card gets better if you do A. It's so uncreative. Like, you know, the new Vindicator for Starhorn is a good example of that. Uh, where is it? Yeah, you see, BBS draws card. Minion grows draw if draw card. It's just total Magmar brain, but I mean, it, it doesn't only happen in Magmar. Uh, it, ha it happens with all the bad BBS ones. Like uh, this stun guy has... Uh, uh, where is that thing? Yggdrasil or something, the tree drop? Yeah, this thing. BBS stun. If stun, minion good. It's just, maybe it's not even Magmar Brain, but just Orc Brain. Um, okay, did horrible with your deck? Really, Reggie? I actually also don't understand um, how I got to S first in the first test with the deck. It's not a horrible deck, for sure. I, I beat Maze with it twice today, for example. Um... But, and, and I misplayed super hard as well <laughs> against him. <laughs> uh, that was kind of funny. <coughs> Pretty sure it took him like two hours longer to hit, hit S today because I won those two games and I tilted him so hard for playing so horribly without getting punished. Um, yeah, I just played very bad. I have no idea what to do most of the time. Yeah, it's not the most straightforward deck. Like Obelisk position is not uh, that easy, right? And Maelstrom hand sculpting is also not that easy. And playing the Mana Forger cheese at the right time. It's not the most skillful deck or anything, but also not the easiest, I think. Anyway, the I'm also surprised that I read as with that first because uh, I already said this a few days ago, but I guess I will flex my EP in a little bit more. Um, that I didn't even play anything the first six hours or something because I was I was watching Mogwai and Fate because I was scared that I wouldn't like the game. So I first was just watching to see if I got the itch. I got the itch. It looked fun. It was fun. 
I hit S first. Um, but my guess is everyone was super washed up, not just me. Because everyone hadn't played two draw in so long. And also I know life once I did start playing after the after watching for six hours first. <clears throat> I also got decimated, loved it. Yeah, decimate must be amazing against the deck. The obelisks. <coughs> But yeah, I, did you always play so much Abyss, Reggie? I I only remember you as a Vitruvian player. Like when you uh, were streaming back in the uh, old 2 draw, I only saw you play Vitruvian. And of course, I mostly remember you from the, as you know, from the Triple Russia's third wish against Mazer. Mazer did it against you, yeah. <coughs> um, so, what other rant can we start about one draw? Yeah, I mean, these kind of cards turn into a random minion with random movements. Again, it's super cross faction as well. I've been talking about that in the new two draw as well. That. I don't really like that cross-faction stuff, so I complain about Sojourner. Uh, that Sojourner is the only Joseki card, the Dream Slot um, team made. It's the only Dream Slot card that I'm like, why? Like every other card we work is the, the Josekification. And then you make an actually well-designed Joseki uh, era cards into a Joseki card. Like, if we just have this card in two roll, yes, nobody would play it, but it would not be toxic design. I think this design is uh, pretty good. It's pretty, yeah. I have absolutely no problem with the design of this card. Why would you? Mm. Celebrant is stupid. I think something like Shiro Poppy Dragon is stupid in one draw. Like in two draw, this would be much more fine because you can actually find your answers. You can't answer anything in one draw. And that's why I think people didn't play removal much uh, in one draw. Because it's not like 3 mana... 3 mana... Um, Martyr... Is totally unplayable. But... Uh, <coughs> it's better to just be proactive because you won't have your Martyr when you need it anyway. In one draw. This is maybe just salt speaking though. I didn't really, I played mostly that Fenor, Lionar. Fenor too, wow. In that time, you were brave. I wanted to play a base only because the new summoning card looked sick. Oh, okay. Especially that right now there's no neutral draw and duelist too. Uh, there is Void Hunter, Artifact Hunter. I guess we can check. I think there is some neutral draw, besides those two as well. Void Hunter, Artifact Hunter, okay, that's almost it. Just Song Weaver as well, which is very hard to pull off. But yeah, I would like the old um, the old Sojourner instead of uh, the new one. Why doesn't that one show up when you type draw? What do they say? Uh, put a card, not draw a card. I guess because you create it, so you don't really draw it. Put a random card into the X part. Yeah, it's total Joseki design. Is there more trash talk we can do about uh, one draw? I did say a lot already. Well, okay, the 
maybe we can find more examples how everything is a high roll deck. Uh, the trials are high roll decks, except Wanderer, I guess, because you just play it. No, it's also a high roll deck because you only have one offs, so you're always lucky to get your answer. Yeah, Wanderer was really designed to frustrate people, just like everything else Joseki made, as he admitted, because. Um, Every time a Wanderer player answers something, you're like, oh, you're so lucky. Because it's your only one of that card. Um, but they do always have it, because they just play 39 diverse cards. You play a Gondor deck, right? I also used to answer many things in Gondor. Um, what's more high roll uh, shit? Well, I already talked about intensify, how that's a high roll keyword. Uh, oh yeah, here we have one of those high roll cards. You have many cards similar to this, I think. This is basically the um, obelisk discount minion uh, design done again. That, that's also very typical for Joseki area design. There are many cards that are kind of the same. It's not always obvious, but they are the same. Um, yeah, this thing. Total high roll card. If you have this with a bunch of obelisks in hand, then GG, unless Plasma Storm. Um, and otherwise, it's a mediocre card. And then there's this stupid backstab spell. A uh, horrible card, but if you just happen to start with an opening hand with this and all your backstab minions, then uh, amazing. Uh, there are many cards like that, where you, that you basically play to have a god hand. You're banking on having a god hand. And then when it happens, the opponent just loses. And you get rewarded for being a gambler. Uh, Mirror Melt is also like that, I would say. Like you're Gambling that they can't answer your cheese, and then you double your cheese, and then there's too much cheese to eat for you. And you die of uh, lactose intolerance. Songweaver rework. You mean for draw, right? Yeah. If decks are all super high roll, yeah. Okay, first really stupid, yeah. That's definitely the, one of the first decks I think of uh, when I think of high roll decks. Well, this card will be more fun with two draw. I played some matches in Legacy and I hated it. Mm. Nah, this, this would suck in two draw too. Again, too much high roll. At least the three card starting hand would. Uh, cock block a lot of high roll hands because a lot of high roll ran hands uh, rely on the five card starting hand. Uh, but there's just too many high RNG cards. Like, uh, look at this thing, it's still the same. Yeah, it's not a 2 2, but hey, I found a new thing to rant about about uh, Joseki era design. Every time they released a toxic RNG card and the community complained about it, they would listen to it like half a year later and they would nerf it. But the nerf would never tackle the actual complaint. It would never they would never change the actual RNG, the thing people complain about. Nobody said Jaxi is too good, the 2 2 body is too big for something that summons a heart seeker in a corner. People said it's a coin flip to win the game. How did they nerve it? They made it a 1-1, one -one, kept the thing people complain about. Um, I'm sure we can find many examples of this. Yeah, Reap of the Nine Moons used to be a 5-4 flying. People complained about it forever. Okay, we will listen. 5-3. Still the same toxic RNG effect. Meltdown. I think it was like a 7-7 seven, seven, deal 7. 
Still the same RNG. Six damage to a random enemy. Uh, they did this every fucking time. Uh, Keeper is also still the same, right? Just lower stats, yeah. So this used to be five mana, uh, four or five with the same effect. They would never change the effect. Always just change the mana cost or the stats. Um, so that's a very typical uh, thing. Oh yeah, another high roll deck. Um, one man army song high in one draw. Like if you get some bingo bangle bullshit, you're you can die so uninteractively and so fast against uh, bingo bangle god hands. Like you 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 didn't even get close to the face yet with your turn one minion. And all the times that they do nothing and they die themselves on, on like six mana or something. Because it's a high roll deck. I think those are my biggest complaints with uh, one draw. Everything is a high roll deck. There are too many toxic RNG cards. And uh, I guess the trials and what else. Uh, yeah, less complexity, because one card per turn is less decision making, less complex board states because less things on the board. Uh, less combos, less flashy plays, that's something I actually didn't mention yet, but it's super uh, important. Cataclysm is full in Kanumka, then it's game. I, I actually did like the Kanumka design on its own. But yeah, with Fault it's uh, it's less fun. Because Fault is also not really fun for the opponent. To draw with its Carpal would be uh, crazy. Yeah, and it wouldn't really make sense. Most of these cards are actually designed for one draw. Like, what are you gonna do with Trinity Oath in two draw? I think even in two draw it would not be horrible, but... It would be very clunky at least. Uh, just wanted to do so and combos and meme Grimes. Well, Grimes is actually also a card I hate, uh, to be honest, sticks. Uh, yeah, it's just total. Dirt. This is one of those Josek exception cards. Um, but well, that, that's maybe just personal taste. Like some people think it's funny, right? And when Grinch flashed out to Megasaurus, I was also laughing. It's just that if these things um, are there all the time in a comp competitive play, then it's only a meme game, um, which can definitely work. If there are many people that like these kind of memes, then this is the game for them. But I do like a game that has a meaningful decision making and that doesn't get fucked by a coin flip. Um, the mini thing decision making, I mean, that it get fucks get fucked by a coin flip. Um, but that's just personal taste, right? There's nothing wrong with liking clownery, and there's also nothing wrong with liking strategy games with meaningful decisions. It's just if you mix both of them, then who do you appeal to? Then both sides don't get what they want, right? Because if you like the clownery, then why don't you just play Hearthstone? They have much higher, like, next level clownery compared to Duelist. And if you have a bit of that clownery in Duelist inside competitive play, then why would you play this over chess? Like, chess is also a Twitch esport since Corona, so... Mm. I might actually be able to build a mill magma deck that works. You mean milling is only in one draw? But you mean what if you could mill in two draw with th this card pool? These metaphors are getting out of hand. Oh, I mean today I'm only using Ron's metaphors. 
I'm surprised you were saying this now. Um, so what RNG is too much RNG for you, what RNG is fine. Well, I, I, I am very uh, strict about that compared to most people, I think. I think the only RNG um, should be the RNG of the card you draw. That for me is already quite a lot of RNG, but again, that's just personal taste. I don't like card games. I like tactics uh, games, strategy games, whatever. So for me, that's enough variance. Um, because games are really different because of how you draw the cards, in which order and stuff. To me, there is a lot of variance. Besides, if you get, if you feel like there's not enough variance, you can just switch decks. Um, which is something you can't do in chess, where you always play the same deck, right? I guess that there are two colors, but two factions, one deck. Um, and then RNG, that is fine, even though I said um, I only like the card draw RNG, which cards you draw at what time, and so on. Um, like, I don't mind Glacial Elemental too much. Um, that's like RNG to make the card not broken. It's not my favorite way to deal with things, still. Glacial Elemental is not my favorite card in the game by any means. But RNG to make things not broken. Um, and the coin flips from that RNG don't decide the game. Because the thing is, um, I guess that's an important note to make on the subject. If the RNG is... Uh, manip you can, if you can manipulate the RNG, uh, then it's automatically more fine, because then you combine RNG with skill. A good example of that is Obelisk, of course, that you um, block bad spawns um, with certain uh, positioning. Uh, so obelisks are also RNG, right? But I still like to play them. Um, it can be quite frustrating, of course, if you get horrible spawns. But again, you have the... Um, every time you place an obelisk and every time you place minions around it, um, you are given the opportunity to express skill in manipulating the RNG. And with Glacial Elemental, you can also usually do that. So I, I, maybe that's like a good um, a good way to make exceptions for RNG. Like RNG might be fine outside of card draw if you allow players to uh, express skill in man manipulating the RNG. Um, so for example, the RNG from the new Nether summoning spawns. Uh, is also totally fine, I think. Like, you can use the minions you already had on board or something, or walk to the edge of the map to uh, make sure everything is in the relevant spot. Um, besides, the reworked nether summoning is not RNG anymore on which minions you get, right? So, nether summoning was also the church sacrifice. There's just only the RNG of which minion spawns where. Then you can do the same as with obelisks. Again, you can manipulate the spawn RNG. Um. Oh shit! I missed a lot of uh, missed a lot of chat. I'm such a ranter, I guess. I like RNG, like Grincher and Grinds. Well, well, sticks. I, you know what I would like. I would like there to be like, a, if we have enough players, this should be possible. I would like it to be uh, that like all the toxic but funny RNG cards get put into like a like a label or something, an expansion, whatever, all under the one same label, and then you just have a letter. It's like anything goes and there are people can play all the cards in the game so also all the clown cards that some people like for example you like uh, Grincher and then you also have like 
and and maybe that's also automatically unranked so no ladder anxieties just for fun and then you have the rank ladder which does show a number that correlates to your uh, skill which gives people anxiety and um, they just exclude the clown cards on that ladder and in tournaments then everybody is happy right everybody can clown around when they want and everybody can play competitive when they want if there is a big player base then why the fuck not isn't that a very simple solution to the different tastes from players in what is fun because yeah some people don't find competitive fun which makes perfect sense like, like for example i did judo as a kid and I liked it, and then my coach was like, oh, you're good, you should uh, start training and play matches, because you could uh, reach national level, maybe. Um, then I had to suddenly play it a lot, and there was pressure on the games, and I had no fun. And I quit. And then I didn't do sports for many years. So I was a little bit less healthy. So yeah, competitive is not always good, but in video games I like it, for me it's more fun. Um, so again, why not just make separate letters uh, for clowns and for people that don't like clowns? You might actually be able to build a mill. Oh, I really read that. Uh, where the fuck am I? I'm not a big online messing game designer myself, but I know that there are people that think otherwise and that their can be very good interesting design. I feel like is required to mitigate powerful abilities more often than not. Yeah, like with Glacial Elemental, right? Yeah, I, I saw this a little bit ago, but I was still on my rant. Sorry, Jay. Hi, Jay. Happy you're here. Um, for the past two hours or something, we've just been talking about my date and uh, shitting on Joe Seki design era um surprisingly people have not been complaining about my complaining so i just keep going um yeah this should just summon a megazor nearby always hmm yeah then it's no longer rng right if crimes always summons mech yeah that's a perfect solution Reggie. When I stopped caring about the game i was spamming egg mech one letter to four minutes for random acts it was funny away but didn't have to do with making decisions much. Yeah, it was just eSports mag and it's not like I never played those kind of RNG clown decks but I don't want to always do that and I don't want to make uh, so-called meaningful decisions then they play the X spell and I just lose on the spot because of RNG. So again, just make it separate, make an anything goes and a competitive letter. It's simple, right? So you don't like obelisks? Uh, maybe I already answered it during my very long rant. Uh, that I think obelisks are fine and I do like to play them because you can manipulate the RNG. Um, and because obelisks will be broken if you could choose the spot. So it's like a mix of glacial elemental and uh, manipulating RNG with skill. Uh, that's how I feel too. There is enough variants to do this with just the cards drawn or small things such as glacial RNG. Some RNG, like what cards you draw, consistently makes it fun. It's not always the same. Uh, but too much past that isn't that too fun. Then we actually have same taste, Jay, which I'm a little bit surprised about because our play styles are very different. Um, but yeah, we. I, with that we totally agree. I realized when I played Final Fantasy Tactics that what I liked about Dooms wasn't the card game part. Yeah, same. Uh, but also that making it a card game makes the game more interesting where you're going. Yeah, it does make it unique, right? You have an 85% chance to hit the unit. I mean, I love from one draw is the Tigress, because you could control where the spawn happens and you can manipulate the energy even more than all this. Yeah, the Tigress is a good example of that. I like listening to rants, it just shows that your passion is about the topic. Yeah, I guess I am. I am passionate about duelists, that's why I get mad a lot. <laughs> you don't get mad if you don't care, right? Um, 
Um, so I caught up on chat. My throat is starting to disappear. Oh, I still have a throat, but I mean the voice. I, I did really, like I, I was almost convinced to play one game of one draw, but after all this ranting, I'm like, no fucking way, man. I convinced myself that it's too garbage even for one game. <laughs> 